Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome to another Loom Wars. Loom Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. Hope seems to be in short supply at the moment. I cannot promise you that, but I can promise you a man in a Star Wars t-shirt talking animatedly over video footage of watched iron hands gradually losing their luminescence. How does that sound? But seriously, folks, it looks like we are in for the long haul with this one. I don't think there are going to be too many people left unscathed by the time COVID-19 has played out. So please look after yourselves, look after each other, wash your hands, keep your distance and heed the advice of your local medical professionals. That's certainly what I will be doing over the coming weeks and months. Who knows how long this will all last. I'll still be here three times a week providing a little bit of watch-based light entertainment to keep us both sane. Anyway, on with today's video. If you've watched the Loom Wars before, you know the format. Eight watches, four quarterfinals, two semi-finals, a final, no third, fourth place playoff because let's face it, who cares? If I have the right mix of watches in the house, I think it's a good time to make one of these episodes. Let's flip the camera and introduce the protagonists. And here they are, and I'm gonna introduce them to you in the order in which they will be competing today in their quarter final pairs, if you will. On the left, Rolex, Deep Sea, Sea Dweller, James Cameron, 2018. I don't need to tell you who owns that one, do I? It's certainly not me. Next up is the Zelos Hammerhead Chronograph. I have reviewed this one on the channel a couple of weeks ago. They're still on sale from Zelos. I'll leave links to all of these ones where appropriate in the description of the video. You're on your own with the Rolex, oddly enough. Next up, it's technically the odd man out today. It's the Oleg and Weiss P101. Now this is a pilot's watch, not a dive watch like the other seven, but with 300 meters of water resistance, it certainly outscores several of its opponents today. You can expect to see a review of this one coming shortly. Today, it's going head to head with my Oris 65 bronze bezel, a watch which has not yet featured in Loom Wars. I wonder if there's perhaps a reason for that. Next to the Oris is the Seiko Arnie Paddy Solar. I managed to get my hands on not one, but two of these for review. You can expect to see that this weekend. And next to that one is the Citizen Pro Master. I thought a pair of Japanese solar powered quartz divers would go well head to head. Last but not least, it's a pair of micro brands. You quite often get great loom from a micro brand. Let's see how these two get on. It's the Draken Tugela, South African influences from a New Zealand base company and next to that one the Deficiano Marlin. I'm expecting big things from both of those watches. Let's get on with the quarters. All right so straight into the Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller James Cameron versus the Zelos Hammerhead Chronograph. Now perhaps not David versus Goliath. I think Rolex would have this one labeled as quality versus quantity. You're certainly not short of loom with the Zelos are you? A vibrant in your face mixture of BGW9 and C3 pretty much all over the place. Bezel, tachymeter, hands, chrono hands, chrono subdials, it's everywhere. Now Rolex uses Chromalite, their own proprietary loom. Allegedly it lasts twice as long as BGW9. Let's see how it goes when I turn up the speed. Now if you remember as far back as Loom Wars episode one, it was won by the Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller, not the James Cameron, the 2017. Now my camera does a maximum of 20 minutes. I reckon that is the equivalent of about four hours of the human eye. I had to do it twice. I had to do two 20 minute consecutive exposures on this to discern between the two of them. Now it's getting to the slightly ridiculous stage here. There really isn't much left from either of those watches, but they have faded at almost exactly the same rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow down the time again. I'm going to slow down the speed back to normal speed for one final look. I'm going to give this one to the Zelos. It wins today, taking out the Rolex. 
Next up then, it's the O&W versus the Oris. Now, there's a reason that the Oris hasn't featured in an episode of Loom Wars thus far. It's because the Loom is not all that fantastic. Both using C3 Superluminova, to a reasonable extent initially anyway. Turn up the speed and you can see the applied indices in the Oris disappearing all too quickly. That's why the Oris hasn't featured so far. The ONW is doing alright for itself considering, as I said, it's not an out and out dive watch, it is a pilot's watch, but I think as we draw towards the end of the 20 minutes, it's fairly clear that the hands on the Oris are going to save it today. So I will slow down once again, we can have a look at these two in real time at the end of the 20 minute period, neither of them showering themselves with glory, but I'm going to give it to the Oris. Moving on to the battle of the Japanese solar quartz dive watches then, you can see these two ticking away in stark contrast to all the other pieces on the table today. We have the Seiko Arnie with that signature loomy bright green on the left and the Citizen Pro Master on the right there with that slightly odd combination of blue loom on the hands and the indices and a green loom pip. I'm really not sure why companies do that to be honest. I don't mind the Z which uses both everywhere, but it always looks a bit odd to use a token spot that's a different colour from everything else. Never mind, turning up the speed here, and you can see that both of them, considering their relatively modest price tags, are doing a pretty good job. But as we draw towards the end of the 20 minutes, I think it is fairly clear that whilst the indices on the Citizen on the right are fading, the hands are hanging on in there, and while the indices on the Seiko are are hanging on in there, it's the hands that are fading. Unfortunately, they're overlapping there at the 5 to 11, but they just come out of the other side in time for me to slow back down to normal speed. I think it's pretty clear the Citizen is the winner here. Boom, look at the loom from those two. As I said earlier on, micro brands often emphasize the loom and these two certainly do. Quickly before we speed up, have a look at the date wheel on the Draken Tugela on the left there, 24, a loom date wheel, a channel first. It also has a loom crown. I won't be showing you that today, but I will show you it in the full review. The Deficiano on the right is doing not bad for itself as well, isn't it? Fully loom chapter ring in orange with C3 everywhere else, C3 all over the Draken together as well. All right, let's separate the men from the boys then. Let's turn up the speed on these two. Now, first thing to go, first thing to fade is the bezel insert on the Draken together. The bezel insert noticeably hanging on better on the Deficiano on the right, but the Deficiano has got a much thinner handset, whereas the Draken has got those big fat sword hands. We're pushing towards the end of the 20 minutes. I'm gonna slow these two back down to regular speed. The Deficiano still hanging in, but the big fat hands of the Draken take this one out when it comes to sheer legibility. Moving on to the quarterfinals then, and talking of boys to men, it's the Aura 65 on the left and the Zelos Hammerhead Chronograph on the right. Maybe I was a little bit gentle with my beloved Aurus, giving it a bit of a buy in the first round by putting it up against a pilot's watch. I don't think it's going to get too far though when you compare it to that Hammerhead. Just an outrageous amount of initial loom. And if it's head to head with the Rolex is anything to go by, this Zelos could be a serious contender today. Why delay the inevitable? Let's crank up the speed then and watch those indices on the Oris vanish as if by magic before our eyes. I don't think the Zeros necessarily does itself any favours by having those complex three stripy lines on the handset with different colours of loom. The hands therefore do tend to merge a little bit with the rest of the dial, but you can't argue with the overall quality on the Zeros. Pretty much the whole thing, dial, hands, indices, subdials, everything remains legible at the end of the 20 minute period, something you can't say about the Oris. Second semi, and it's another one that I had to double up. I had to do two 20 minute takes with my camera here to separate between the Citizen Pro Master on the left and the Draken Tugela on the right. Here we go, let's turn up the speed and you can see how they both get on. Following similar patterns to their last outings, it's the bezel insert that fades first on the Draken, whereas the hands and the indices pretty much hang on well. Citizen on the left, ah, the indices and the loom pip are doing okay, but it's those big hands that really stand out on the Citizen. They could 
be the, the trump card, so to speak, today. Moving into the second 20-minute period, both watches doing very well. Like I say, this is probably the equivalent of about five, six hours of human eye anyway. That's my estimation, living with these watches as I do. So we're getting towards the end of a full 40 minute, and you're going to be impressed if you pick up either of these watches, to be honest. Let's slow it back down then for a final judgment. Pretty tough on this one, both handsets still very clear. I'm gonna give it to the Citizen though. I think the extra stripes on those handsets really do make them pop in a way that the, the plain swords of the Draken don't. It's a win for the Citizen. Okay, it's the big finale. Again, perhaps not David versus Goliath, but the Citizen is certainly the David today. 150 US dollars, by far the cheapest watch on the table. Zelos not the most expensive, coming in at around 850, but still a factor of several times more expensive than the plucky Citizen on the left. All right, let's turn up the speed on these ones. Again, I had to do a full 40 minutes, so two 20 minute exposures, sellotape together in the middle here. I put fresh batteries in my UV torch that I use to charge these ones. Perhaps that's why they're lasting so long today. Perhaps that's why this has been one of the hardest loom wars for me to judge of the four that I've done on the channel to date. Now you've had a look at these watches twice before. They fade in very similar patterns. The Zelos fades very evenly across the dial, the hands, the bezel, the indices, etc, etc. But it's the hands of the citizen that are going to win it Loom Wars today. I guess really the best a watch can offer in terms of Loom is to have supreme legibility, supreme amounts of Loom on the hour hand and the minute hand. The bezel pip only really matters if you're diving, how many of us are going to be looking at these watches in pitch black conditions. But you can certainly tell the pure diving origins of the citizen here today as it takes out Loom Wars episode for beating all comers. So three cheers then for the plucky citizen. The Orient Kamasu did very well for itself, making it all the way to the final of Loom Wars episode three. So it goes to show that it's not necessarily about spending big bucks to get a watch with great loom. Chosen carefully, you can spend as little as $150 and still get fantastic loom on your watch. Just to prove that I'm not completely mental and to silence any doubting Thomases who may have been in the audience, here it is going head to head against the big boy today, against the 10 thousand dollar Rolex Deep Sea. Again, it's a familiar pattern. It's the hands, it's the application of loom in the hands of the citizen that mean it is a deserved victor today, taking out the Rolex as well on its way to ultimate victory. So there you have it, another episode of Loom Wars Run and Won, and won by the cheapest watch on the table and the cheapest watch ever to win an episode of Loom Wars, the $150 Citizen Pro Master. Very, very impressive. You can expect to see a review of this one in the coming weeks on the channel. Thanks for watching. I will see you then, if not before.